Very good. Uh, let's take our Bibles and turn to John 16. John 16. <clears throat> Great to be back at Open Door. I was at Open Door Orion all, a Sunday, all day Sunday. And uh, so I was at an open door, but it just wasn't Kent. But uh, this church is always great to be here and appreciate all your faithfulness. And uh, so praise the Lord for uh, the good people of this church. Don't forget the Wongs are, uh, most of them are still in Taiwan doing ministry. They're coming back here anytime, but I uh, just want to remind you of that. <clears throat> John 16, I'm going to start here. And uh, let's start at uh, verse 22. And you now, therefore, um, have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name, ask, and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you, in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you uh, plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask, uh, in uh, ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out of God. I came forth from the Father and come unto the in, uh, into the world again. And I leave the world and go into the Father. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I'm honored to be able to preach your word. Lord, I just thank you, Father, for this privilege, for all the people, for your house. As you said, it may be filled. We thank you for a full house. And we pray that those watching, those in this room, Lord, that you'd work in a mighty way. Lord, we have <clears throat> physical needs. I need my voice to hold up. We have spiritual needs. Um, Lord, people who might be lost need to be saved. Those who are saved uh, need some to be rebuked and uh, to decide to serve you. Others need strength because they don't know exactly. They're not strong enough right now. They're struggling. Others need wisdom because they're seeking some answers. And all of us have spiritual needs, Lord. So we pray on the spiritual side that your Holy Spirit would give us all that we need. And we ask for your help and your power and for you to work in a mighty way. We praise you, Lord, for all the great things you've done. But the soul saved this week for just the uh, uh, building to be in and uh, the Bible to hear. And we pray you'd speak to us and teach us today in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Um, Jesus is telling the disciples here <clears throat> that he's going away. And they're going to sorrow. But their sorrow is temporary. And, uh, and that's part of the deal. Down to verse uh, 20. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you um, that uh, ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And just so understand that there are times when the world seems like they're having a blast, they're, they're winning, um, but, but time is the difference. Because they, he said, hey, I'm going to be you know, in the grave and you'll be weeping, but it's going to change. And to understand, we got all, all of eternity um, to rejoice. In other words, you know, you're, you're in the Super Bowl and the other team takes, scores the first touchdown. Well, you don't get depressed and give up and say, I guess we lost. No, you already know you're going to win the game. So don't get too down if the other team scores first or if they, they, they get ahead because you're going to be you're gonna be rejoicing the whole rest of the year after you win the Super Bowl, and that's, that's what we have. And uh, we know we win in the end. Right. But the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your joy shall be turned, or your mourning shall be turned into joy. Your sorrow shall be turned into joy. And so <clears throat> it's temporary. Yes. Okay, you're going you're gonna to sorrow for a while, but it's okay because God... Uh, Jesus is going to be raised from the dead, and they're going to be okay. And understand, we have sorrow sometimes in this life, but we know that uh, the sorrow of the world, the Bible says, work a death. There's no point to the world's sorrow. There's no all things work together for good. There is no, um, you know, morning lasts the night, but joy comes in the morning. You know, there's none of that. The world just will have sorrow for eternity. They'll have all they have. All this world's going to be burned up. I mean, but we have joy for eternity as we serve the Lord. And, and so in your life, you might have sorrowful times. Jesus just told him that. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with you because you go, you're, you're sorrowful, depressed. But you don't want to stay there. You, wanna, you, want, you, you go through things, somebody you love dies, some tragic thing happens, or sometimes there's no reason for it. You're just, you know, you just go into depression. Sometimes it doesn't make sense. Okay, just, just function. 
Keep on going, read your Bible, pray, go to church, love people, do ministry, do all you're supposed to do. And in time, God's going to give you strength and, 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 and bring you out of it. Um, just understand you're not broken because you go through a sorrowful time and everything's not bad and hopeless. There is sorrow even in the Christian life. But we do have the anchors of hope and joy and peace and all those things. And you go through those things. And, uh, and, and, and so that's okay. And so Jesus tells them that you're going to sorrow for a while. I'm going to die. I'm going to be, you're, you're going to see me crucified and you're going to abandon me. You're going to feel guilty. And uh, the world's going to be rejoicing because I'm gone. But it's going to change. When my body is raised from the dead and you see me again, you know, there, there you'll have hope. And, and so that happens sometimes. <clears throat> um, and then the thing he really is, is, is preparing them for in, in John 14, 15, and 16 is, I'm going away. Right, right, right. And you got to be ready for this. Amen. Okay, it's really important that they, they get this. Verse 23, and in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. So understand, up to this point, Jesus, the disciples are with him full time. So when they were in a storm, they would go wake Jesus up. Or they'd go call on Jesus to save them. We don't know what to do. When they had troubles, here was uh, a bunch of uh, people to feed. They didn't have enough food. Well, they just asked Jesus. Pretty, pretty convenient. Right. Pretty easy. They, they, they try to cast out a demon over here. This demon wouldn't come out. <clears throat> What'd they do? Hey, Jesus, why can't we cast this one out? We can't get this one. And Jesus casts him out. And, and you know, I remember, uh, I remember one of our men, he was telling me, he says, you know, I was 16. He said, I had a girlfriend. I had a job. I had a car. He said, I thought that I was so in control and I was so awesome and I was... He says, I thought I, I, I had life figured out. And he said, I had no idea that everything I had was, I had this giant safety net underneath me. I didn't even understand that my parents were paying my insurance for my car. <laughs> I did not know how much it was going to cost for rent. And he says, I did not know how dependent I was on my parents. I thought I was doing everything. And, and. And, uh, and, and, and you young people are like, really? I don't, my parents don't do anything for me. You know, you, where do you live? <laughs> Go look how much rent costs. And look how many hours you have to work at McDonald's to pay for that, just so you know. And uh, at 15 bucks an hour. And, uh, and so, um, it's, like they say, at 17, uh, you can't believe how much your parents don't know. And by the time you're 23, you're amazed how much your parents learned. And, uh, and uh, that's, that's, what, that's what happens. And so they're like dependent on Jesus. And Jesus says, you know what? You've always asked me, but now you're not going to ask me for anything. Because I'm not going to be here. I'll be in heaven. I'm going to be up in heaven, he says. In verse, uh, 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 verse 23. And that, in that day you shall, ask noth you shall ask me nothing. Like, uh, what are we going to do then? Because we don't always know how to do these things. And no wonder, and I get this, no wonder Jesus so often let them fumble. Let them try and not do well things because they had to learn. They had to figure out what, sometimes I can't do this. Sometimes I don't know how to do this. Here's how you figure this out. Here's what happens when things go wrong. And so Jesus kind of lets them. And if you think God is just going to make everything go perfect for you in your life, you know, you learn a lot from your, your failures, your struggles, your, you know, climbing the mountain. Yes, that's right. You know, I, I always say I like bike riding downhill. It's the uphill that gets me. <laughs> But, you know, riding a bike downhill doesn't, doesn't get you a lot of exercise. And when everything's great, you don't learn a lot, you don't grow a lot, you don't get a lot stronger. And so he let them go through those things. And, and so that's, that's stuff that happened. And he said, you, you don't have that. But he says the solution is to ask the Father directly. Because you've been asking me, I'm going up to heaven, but I've made it so you can go to the Father now and just go to him. You're going to have this thing called prayer now. And this prayer is so open now, and the access is so direct, you can just go talk to the Father about it. You, he is your Father. And he's been teaching them, Matthew 6, other passages, he's your Father in heaven. And so you gotta, you got to go to him. He understands you. He cares as a Father. He's watching as a Father. He's not abandoning you. He is a perfect heavenly Father. And so you got to go directly to the Father. Verse 23, again, in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive that you join me before. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs. But I shall show you plainly of the Father. And at that day ye shall ask in my name, and I uh, say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loveth you. Because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth uh, from God. <clears throat> the hand for juice. Oh, my soul. <laughs> Woo. And so um, that you can go directly to the Father and pray. And so what I'm teaching on today, and I'm teaching on tonight because I, I, there's too much to teach on. I'm teaching you about what in Jesus' name means. What does in Jesus' name mean? Um, people, I, I hear people use that, and, and, and it's like it's just a tagline. It means something. There's a, the Jesus is teaching us here why you're, te- why you're praying in Jesus' name, why you're going to the Father in Jesus' name, what it means. So this morning, I'll teach you what G- in Jesus' name mean, means. Tonight, I'll teach you what you do in Jesus' name, although I'll touch a little bit on that this morning, because I find very few people actually understand that, okay, what that means in Jesus' name. But he says you'll be able to go to the Father directly. And, uh, and just I want you to notice that if you love the key to the Father, and the Father is the one who hears our prayers. Just so biblically understand, I don't pray to Jesus. Okay? I don't think it's wrong. I don't pray to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says when you pray, say our Father. Amen. Okay? There's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And they represent, they're, they represent different things. The Father, they're all one. But the Father is the soul of God. And, and the Father is the one who talk to the most. And enter into thy closet and shut thy door, and thy Father would see, uh, see it in secret, shall reward thee openly. It always talks about the Father in prayer. Jesus prays our Father all in John 17 and other passages. So understand, God really wants you to understand the concept of the Father. And the Father is a part of the Trinity you pray to. If, don't be critical if someone prays to Jesus. It's fine. But... <clears throat> But that's the way God wants us to understand that. And Jesus says, you're not going to ask me anymore. You're going to ask the Father. But I'm giving you access to the Father. That's right. Okay? And so you're going you're to do that. But how you get access to the Father and how the Father treats you, a huge part of it depends on how you treat Jesus and how you feel towards Jesus. Okay? And so <clears throat> um, he says this um, in verse 27. He says this. He says, for the Father himself loveth you because you have loved me. And I believe that I came forth from God. Um, you know, it says this in John 14. It says, if a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him and manifest ourselves to him. So how you treat Jesus determines how, you, how the father treats you. Don't think you can, be, you can reject Jesus and come to the father. No man cometh unto the father but by me. Okay? And so you have to love Jesus. Um, to really have a close walk with the Father. You know, I, I'm not going to like you very much if you don't like my kids. And, you know, if you go up and give my kids nice things, I'm going to like you. I get half cut. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to like you because you, you go and spoil my daughter Esther back here. All right, Esther Wave. If you want to spoil her, that's Esther. And she's volunteering. And, uh, and so um, because you love my child and, and God the Father says, you know, you're treating, you love Jesus. You, you're close to him. You, you, you love him and keep his commandments, man. I'm going to bless you. I'm hearing your prayers. And it's a big part of how he treats you is how you treat his child. You wouldn't like someone if they didn't like your child, right? If they're mean to your child or if they're mean to your dog. That's even worse in Seattle um, because of, you know, and we, we, we all love, you know, Get our child, you know, the people who put their dogs in the strollers, you know, type people like that. And, uh, yeah, we, we love those people. We pray for them. And, uh, and so, <clears throat> what, what does it mean in Jesus' name? What does that mean when, when, Jesus, when Jesus just says that? A few different times in this passage, he talks about that. Um, first of all, it is a name that gives us access. Chapter 16, and, or, let me go back to chapter 16 and verse uh, um, 23. And uh, in that day, ye shall ask, the, <clears throat> ask me nothing. Verily, very, 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 I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Okay, we're going we're gonna to get to that a lot of times um, uh, in verse 24. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, 
um, and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. There is a fullness of joy that comes from answered prayers. Prayers are supposed to get answered. I preached a while back on, I just talked about how much effort have you studied into prayer? Did you study more to get your driver's license than you have on prayer? Okay, how much do you know about prayer? And I taught, and, and then someone came after me and said, Pastor, you have to teach on prayer. And this is one of the lessons on prayer that we're teaching, just as we're going to be teaching on prayer for a while, Lord willing. But in Jesus' name is part of that thing. But understand, we see in verse 24, he says, you haven't asked in my name, but if you ask, there's that when you get your prayers answered, which is supposed to happen. But a bunch of people don't know what the Bible says about that. Okay? You know, if you don't do the qualifications of prayer, you're not going to get the answers to prayer. For example, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Right. If you accept sin in your life and in regard, and the word regard means have a place for sins in your life, the Lord's not going to hear you. He just says that. That's just part of the, the qualification. So here he says, ask. And if when you begin to get a prayer life that gets victory and gets answered, it brings a fullness of joy. It's just a wonderful thing. We thank God for that, and, and, and that's what God wants there. In verse 26, it says, At that day you shall ask in my name, and I say, in, I say not unto you, um, but I pray to the Father, the Father himself loveth you. He says, you need to pray in my name. It's given you access. And so maybe to <clears throat> illustrate that, let's pretend like um, there is some um, uh, let's let's pretend like there is some business that's secure and they have a locked door and all those things, and you are delivering for UPS or the Postal Service something, and because of who um, you deliver for, you have the uniform and you're coming there, and because of who you work for, you get to go and have access into that business, right? Because you have that. There went my toxic drink. And, uh, I was looking for this one. I got the wrong one. So you're going to go, and you're going to go, and you're going to get access into that business because you're delivering for FedEx. You're delivering for whoever you're delivering for. This ground is sizzling. And, uh, and, uh, and you're, 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 uh, you're, you're able to get into that business. Let's say you want to get on the base. You want to go to McCord, uh, Fort Lewis McCord, and, and you're a, with a vendor. Okay, you don't have access to that unless you go in with that vendor and they give you access because that company goes to that place. You have access to get into there. And so you have that because of that. Let me turn to the Ephesians chapter 2 and let me show you some of these verses about accessing in Ephesians chapter 2. So if you clean it all, just toss it down there, we'll get it. Ephesians chapter 2. We'll get the rest of it later. And uh, let's hit uh, verse. Um, Ephesians 2, and let's look at verse 18. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 18. <clears throat> For through him we, have, uh, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. So this is what Jesus said earlier. He said, look, you have access. You're going to be able to pray to the Father, but you come in my name. You don't have any right to the Father. You're, you're a sinful human. But the Father's in heaven, and when you come with Jesus' name, that brings you the access. Now you have a right. And the Bible says now we have access to the Father. This is one of the most important doctrines of the Bible that is so rarely taught is access to God the Father. See, in the Old Testament, not everybody could go into God's presence. The priest, that was their job. They went into the Holy of Holies. They went to the holy place. But when Jesus came, there was this veil. There was this curtain in between us and, and between the, even, uh, even the priests and, the, and God. But Jesus, when he died, the veil was ripped in half, showing that now everybody has access to God the Father. Amen. But only through Jesus' death and his flesh. Okay? The access, it says we have access to God. So that's what the Bible says. Come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 4.16. Because you get access to pray to God. In other words, literally the access is so open and so good that you literally, when you pray in Jesus' name, if you have that access through Jesus because you're his, you go into his very presence. Yes, yes. And you're literally right there in front of the Father. You're in the throne room. And it's an amazing thing to think that you have that access because Jesus gave us that access. Chapter 3 
and verse 12. <clears throat> in Ephesians here. <clears throat> Um, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. He says, look, we have access. And verse, verse 11 talks about it. It's Jesus Christ, according to the eternal purpose, which God had purpose in Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith. So we get access to God the Father. So when you pray, you go through Jesus, you have access to him. He is the way to get into God's presence. That's where we get that. It's not just a tagline at the end of your prayer. It's saying, Lord, I come to you in Jesus' name. This is why I'm here. This is what lets me in the door to you is the name of Jesus. He has opened the door to get me there. Number one, it's a name that gives access. Um, <clears throat> let me go to Romans 5. Let me read that also. So you have access to God the Father to pray um, because of the name of Jesus. Uh, Romans chapter 5 and verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into the grace wherein we stand. So let me, let me explain. You just said twice, it said you have access by faith. So what happens? What happens is you go and you pray in Jesus' name and you either have faith that you have the access or you don't. And let me just stop and, and, and let you not mess yourself up a little bit here. Because some people, because of a self-consciousness, they keep thinking of themselves. And then they think, God, you know, I'm so bad. I don't deserve this. God's not going to hear me. Correct. You must have con the confidence of faith to go and say, God, I have, I have access here. And I believe you're hearing me. And I'm praying in faith. Because you've got to believe you got to trust that when God says you have access by faith, you either believe him or you don't. You say, well, it's not about him, it's about me. That's the problem. You're thinking about yourself too much. Your access is not you. Your access is Jesus. And so you come to him and say, I come to you in Jesus' name, and this is why I'm coming here. He already knows who you are. He already knows your weaknesses. He loves you anyway. He already died for all those sins. You just have to, by faith, believe that he did. Now, the confidence to come to him in your prayer life will change when you have access by faith. And in Jesus' name, you do that. Number one, we have to go, <clears throat> and it gives us access. Number two, it is a name drop that gets someone to help you. Okay, there's a lot of verses on this where we were just in John in John 16. Let's go back there in John 16. So it's a name drop that lets you in and that gets someone to help you. Again, verse 23, and now you therefore uh uh, uh, verse sorry, 23, and, and in that day, you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto, if you ask nothing in my name, ask that you may receive, that your joy may be full. I'm coming in Jesus' name. So, um, over time, we've we've collected um, resources to help people, and you know, we're always, always doing those things. And so, sometimes you might, you might come to me and say, <clears throat> You know, Pastor, I have a, I have a problem with my, you know, whatever, my, my car. And let's pretend we don't have it right now. Let's feel like I have a mechanic. And I say, okay, thank you. We say, I, I, I have, don't worry about it, we're good. Thank you. Uh, we go and we, you say, Pastor, um, I don't have money, I gotta get my car fixed. And I, I have a contact with that mechanic. And I say, I say, call this number and tell them Pastor Joel said to fix your car and help you. Do you see how that name gives that ability to get help? Does that make sense? Yes, I have that with, with different people. I could, I could call and say, hey, tell them pastor said to help them. Tell them pastor Joel did that. There's been an Andrews at church, and somebody comes and says, you know, I'm hungry. I don't have any food, da 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 da, da. And I say, okay, I'm, I can't go there right now. Go over to the church over there, and, and there's a guy knocking the door, and there's a guy named Andrew there. And tell them that I said, that I said uh, um, Pastor said to give him some, uh, some, some uh, drinks out of the fridge and, uh, and, and take him upstairs and give, get him some food from whatever's in the food bank. So if the guy just comes there, 
he's not going to get in. We're not open door Baptist church during the week. Um, we're closed door. And, uh, but, uh, but the, the, he, we, 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 uh, we, he might come there and, and the food bank's not open all week. And we're not going to let people just walk in and come into our fridge. By the way, we have to be very careful what we let in here at the church. Um, we have, uh, it's rough. I mean, sometimes they'll say, can I come and use the bathroom? And they're in there 30 minutes and there's blood and needles when they're done. Um, we, have to, we have a lot of stuff like that happen. And so we have to be kind of careful. But if, if somebody came to him, don't try this now. Don't listen to anybody. They're lying. And, uh, but if, if they, you come in uh, and you come in here and you go and you say that to him, Pastor Joel said to go and let him have some in the fridge and take what's there. Well, because I said to do that, because of my name now they can get now they get the help right maybe yeah and uh and and so um but when you do that we 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 have that i might say to somebody hey call this person and tell them i said to give you a job i might have somebody at our church who hires people and i won't send them anybody unless that person is real trustworthy right and then i call and i say hey, tell them pastor said to hire you and they do that right because of that name, it gets them to give you help. Okay, and Jesus says, hey, go to the Father in my name. Okay, and, and then ask, because I'm not going to be here anymore, but he is there, and now you just go to him and tell him what you need, but come in my name. Yes, sir. Because I am the one who gives that to you, and I'm going to help you to get that and, and help you get that. Number three, it is used... Because you're already, because you are doing works in his place. <clears throat> it is used because you're doing works in his place. So let's say um, <clears throat> somebody calls and says, hey, can the church help me? I need some food. And, 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 and we say, okay, um, where, where, do you, where do you live? What's your address? What do you need? And so we go and I send you to that door and you go up and you buzz the door and they see who are you and, and you say, I'm with Open Door Baptist Church, and they said um, I was supposed to bring you food. When you say that, they know who you are, and that makes it so they open the door because you are doing the work for the church. We said you could be working for FedEx or you, the Postal Service. Be, you might not have access there in your plain clothes when you're just walking up there and with your name, but their name gets you in. Okay, and when you're doing the work of God, you're representing God, you now can ask in Jesus' name. Because you are in his place. Because Jesus is no longer on earth and you're his hands and feet. And because of that, like an ambassador comes into a country and he does this in the name of America... You can do that because you are coming in his place. Let's go to John 14. <clears throat> and verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Do you see that? He's like, I'm going away, but you're going to do greater works than me. And whatever you ask in my name, whatever you do in my name, you're going in my place. The works that I do shall ye do also. Now you are going to win souls. Yes. I'm, not, I'm not witnessing. So you go witnessing in Jesus' name. Yes. You go in his place. And let's go to, uh, to uh, Mark chapter 9. This is what Jesus means when he says, in my name. It's the access. It's the name that gets you access there. It's whose place you are in. In, in, uh, in, in, uh, in Mark chapter 9. And verse 41. It says, for uh, whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name. Because you belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall, he shall not lose his reward. Notice you're given the cup of water in Jesus' name because that person, you're doing it for God. So when we do works, we do them in the name of Jesus. All right. Alice, can you take the temperature in here? It feels like it's not working. And, uh, and so you're doing it in the name of Jesus. 
okay? Jesus is not here, but you're doing it in his place. That's what we do. We are doing that thing for him. So you would, you would go and be in that place of Jesus. Um, let's go to Mark chapter 16. <clears throat> it, is, it, is, it is us going because we are doing the works in his place. Uh, we did Mark 9, 41. Let me go to, uh, yeah, let's go to Mark 16. And doing the work of God here. And it says uh, uh, here in verse 15, he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel of every creature. That's the work of God. And he that believeth and is baptized uh, shall be saved. He that believeth not uh, shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. And they shall speak with new tongues and so forth. They're doing it in Jesus' name. Just like you'd represent the church to take the food, you would have that name. You would, you would be going in that name. You're in the place of Jesus. And we're doing the work of God. You say, I am going and doing this work in Jesus' name. We're doing it because we're Christians. We're doing it by the name of Jesus. And to exalt his name because we're in his place, we're doing his work in this situation, we're doing it for him. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 20. So one of the most amazing things you ever get to do is you get to be the ambassador for Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead be reconciled to God. So as I preach today, I am preaching the word of God. I, am, I have been called by God to be a preacher. I am preaching the word of God. I am not preaching with my authority, with what my opinion is, with what my ideas are. I'm doing this in Jesus' name. Because God has called me, sent me, and given me his word, and I'm preaching what the Bible says. This is in Jesus' name. Okay? We gather in Jesus' name. That's the authority under which we meet. Right? We'll talk about that tonight. And that's what we do. Okay? So we have these things we do. We do it because we are in Jesus' place. We are his hands and feet. Moses said this when he represented God in Exodus 5.23. He says, I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name. Moses didn't go because he wanted to go talk to Pharaoh. He didn't want to talk to Pharaoh. But God sent him. And so he went in God's name. We do this as companies. We do this in our lives in many ways where we are representing someone. An ambassador for Christ. We go and we are in Christ's ambassador and we represent him in another country. We go and we are here in the name of America and we are saying that you need to stop these human rights abuses or whatever. They're not going by themselves. They're going for the country. They're giving those instructions and doing that. I want to say live your life doing the work of God. You're going in the name of Jesus. Okay, we're not feeding people today in the food bank because it's entertaining. Okay, because we don't have anything else to do. It's work, and we do that and uh, because of the name of Jesus. That's why we're doing that. And so you do your work in Jesus' name. You do it for Jesus. You do it to please him. And now you go to God and say, Lord, you know, I'm in this situation because I'm here in your name. And you, you do that. Number four, it is using the authority behind that name. Let's go back to Mark 16. And then I'll illustrate a little bit to you. Mark 16. <clears throat> so come through that access that it gives you. Come through the authority. That's the door you come through. And then come because you're in the place and doing Jesus' work. Mark 16. And it says, go into all the world and preach the gospel, verse 15, to every creature. If you're doing that, you're going in Jesus' name, right? right. He that believeth on uh, and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These things shall fall. Then that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up servants. And if they drink any deadly thing, they shall not hurt them. That was the, the, the drink I just had a little while ago. And, uh, and uh, they shall... Um, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. But that is not about you saying, okay, good, I can do this. I'm going to go and, and do this. I'm going to go lay hands on all kinds of people and heal them. Well, it's, it's not about you having a, a TV show and, and people paying you to do it. 
It's not in your name, right? So um, I've had to claim these verses here oftentimes because legitimately um, I'm a lot of times in very, you know, I'm eating things that are, you know, I'm in an unclean situation. I'm in a country with, they don't have, you know, sanitary cooking conditions and I'm eating food that's strange and, and all kinds of things. And, and you know, people, the American immune system is not very strong because we don't eat dirty things. We don't have dirty hands um, when we eat. We, we, you know, we, so we don't, our immune systems aren't that great. And so I go, and many times, this happened on the last trip, um, I, was, I was eating and they, they dished my plate up. If I can dish it up, I can control it more. But they dished it up and they put a bunch of shrimp on there. And, uh, and shrimp are, so shrimp are fine in America, if you, but shrimp are bottom feeders. They're garbage eaters. And so when you eat shrimp, just understand, um, if it's a polluted area, you can get really sick, okay? And so I was in a polluted area, and they put shrimp on my plate. And, well, they, they, they were very excited to give me shrimp because shrimp's a delicacy. And I'm not a big seafood eater, but I'll, you know, I don't want to offend people. I want to win them to Christ. And, and, and that's, they're, they're fishermen. They're, they catch the shrimp, and they're very proud of what they got, and they give it to me. But, man, the water there is nasty. But I'm not going to offend them, so I took a bite of the shrimp, and it didn't taste right. And, but that's what I'm on a plate. And so I said, Lord, you said. <laughs> and I, I claim this verse all the time. And they shall take up serpents, and if they, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And they shall lay the hands of the sick, and they sh- uh, uh, shall recover the serpents and everything else. And I have to go to God with that, and I have to go to God and say, Lord, you know, i got to eat this. And I'm not thinking this is, but I can't, I can't get sick, Lord. You know, I don't have time. I'm, I, I, I got such a short trip, and I can't get down. I've got to, you've, got to, you've got to just make it safe. Amen. Now, what if I was just traveling around for fun? I'm not, I can't claim that verse. I'm just going on vacation. And I'm not there in Jesus' name. Does that make sense? So it, it's given you an authority. I can't cast out a demon because I think it's fun. It, it, because I want to. It's you're, 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 you're doing the work of God. God sent you there. You're in Jesus' name. When I'm there for UPS, I'm, I'm going and doing this thing for UPS. I'm in their name. I'm, deliver- I'm employed by them, doing their work. And when you're coming in Jesus' name, you have that authority. That's why the Great Commission starts out, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. That word means authority. And we get that authority from doing the work of God. So an illustrated that is when, when a policeman stands in the highway and he says, stop in the name of the law. The policeman's this big, but here's this giant semi coming toward him. And he's standing in the highway and he's stopping all these cars. Well, does he have the authority? Does he have the power to stop the, 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 the truck? No. It can run him over and smash him. But because he has the name of the law, he has that authority of who's sending him, who's authorized him, who's ordained him. He has the city, he has the state, he has whatever authority behind him. If you fight against him, you're not just fighting against that guy. Right? You're fighting against what's behind him, which is the legal system and the military or the government or whoever, because he's saying stop in the name of the law. The uniform, the position of who sent him gives him that authority. And so when you decide to be a worker for God, an ambassador for Christ, a laborer for God, and you need to go and deal with that demon because God put you in that position, you go in the name of Jesus with that authority. When you go preaching the gospel, when you go do God's work, you come in the name of Jesus with that authority instead of just your own power, your own strength, your own authority. Because we don't have much authority, right? I mean, I mean, you can barely get the kid to obey you. Try a demon. <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they mix together once in a while. And, uh, and, and, but, but it's, <clears throat> you get that authority through the name of Jesus. That's why you rebuke in the name of Jesus. Because it's in his name. It's in his authority. It's through him that we get all these things. It's through all, him we get all these things. And so Jesus is saying, look, I am leaving you can't, you can't ask me anymore. I'm not going to be with you in the boat. 
But the Father will listen if you come in my name. My name is your access. My name gets you in there. You're going to face demons more powerful than you. But in my name, you'll have that authority to cast out that demon. The demon can wipe you out. So those seven sons of Siva, they saw the, the apostles casting out demons. And they decided, wow, we want to do this. And they, they went to a demon-possessed person and said, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, we command you to come out of this, out of this man. And the demon says an interesting thing. He says, Jesus I, we know, and Paul we know. But who are you? Can, can you imagine getting mocked by a demon? <coughs> and then the demon attacks him, beats him up, rips him to pieces, rips off his clothes. The guy runs out. These people run out of there naked because they had no authority. They weren't really in Jesus' name. And don't try to take Jesus' name. We'll talk about that tonight. You don't try to take the name of Jesus when you don't have the name of Jesus in what you're doing. Don't take the name of Jesus and, and, and go into the bar. Say, I rebuke you for charging me for my beer in the name of Jesus. Okay? It's not going to work. Okay? You don't have that authority. You don't do them. Uh, you, don't, you don't do that because you aren't in the name of Jesus. You want to make sure that you are truly coming in the name of Jesus and truly coming. Let's go to John 15. So it's a name. It's a position. It's an access, and everything, it unlocks the Christian life, the name of Jesus. <clears throat> John 15 and verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. Uh, uh, and your shoot for remain, remain, and whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. These things I command you, that you love one another. So we see in Jesus' name, you do that. You want to be careful not to go and, and, and get out of Jesus' name. It is a path. The last thing that's really important, it is a path of salvation. Um, let's go to the book of Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Of course, you don't have to turn all these verses. I, I have a lot more. And tonight I'm going to give you, what can you do in Jesus' name? Okay. Acts chapter 4. So I actually, when I pray oftentimes, I actually don't say at the end. And I'm not, not getting too technical as the Bible doesn't say this is a thing you have to do just right. But because of understanding the concept of in Jesus' name, I actually come at the start of my prayer in Jesus' name. I say, Lord, I come to you in Jesus' name today. Father, I ask in Jesus' name. that, Lord, For example, I know God wants people saved. Father, I ask in Jesus' name you would save that person. Because the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which is lost. Now, I might put it at the end of a prayer. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not getting, just pray. Okay? You'll do fine. But, but, but the name of Jesus is, is that access that we get in there. Um, Acts chapter 4 and uh, verse 9, it says this. If we this day be examined of the good deed which is done to the impotent man, uh, by which means he is made whole, be it known unto you and to, to you all, and to all the people in Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole. So you got the concept. This man is healed by the name of Jesus. Okay? And they said, well, you can't preach in that name anymore. And, uh, and, uh, and it says, uh, this is the stone which is set at naught uh, uh, of all the builders, which has become the head in the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby ye must be saved. It says there is one name that gets you to heaven. There is one name that's going to save you. Romans 10, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, what does calling upon the name of the Lord mean? Let me just explain this because it's our theme this year, the name of the Lord. Okay? In the Bible, names were incredibly important. God changes names for people. Simon, you're going to be called Peter. 
You're going to be now called a rock, okay? I'm going to, that's going to represent what your life is. Jacob, you're going to be called Israel. You were a supplanter, now you're a prince with God. Abraham, I'm twitching your name from Abram to Abraham. Because a name meant things, okay? And you believed on someone's name, or you didn't, right? So Jesus' name, the name Jesus means the Lord saves. The Lord delivers. That's what the name means. And when you come, so <clears throat> go back a step. Let's pretend like you go and you go to a, uh, a mechanic. And it's called Budget Super Cheap Auto Repair. <laughs> right? I'm not recommending that. But you go there. And, and, and they say, oh, your, your alternator's out. That's going to be $3,000. And you say, whoa, 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 I thought you were budget super cheap auto repair. That's what your name says, right? Reliable internet company. And you say, hey, you guys say your name is reliable. And my internet hardly ever works. I don't believe on your name. Your name doesn't match. Right? When the Bible says the Lord saves, the Lord delivers. And you say, Lord, Jesus is the one who saves us. I'm believing on that name. And I believe the Lord saves. And I'm coming to Jesus for salvation. Whosoever shall call... Upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The name of Jesus is this access that saves you. This name of Jesus gets you to heaven. Because that name means the Lord is the one who saves us. And salvation comes when you could try to save yourself and you say the Lord is the one who saves. I'm not believing on me anymore. I'm not trying to be a good enough person to save me. That would be Joel delivers. Joel saves. Okay? You believe on Jesus. And you've got to call upon him to save you. Yes. You got to call upon him to save you. Free attorney. And you go to them. They say, oh, that's only going to be, be $2,000. You say, you know what? You said free. I'm calling on you. To, you have to do what you, your name is. Okay, and so you go to the Lord and you say, I'm calling upon you to save me. I am believing on your name. The Lord delivers. That's why God picked Jesus' name. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. There's no baby book for Jesus' family. It was already picked by God before Jesus was ever born. Why? Because he had to be the Lord saves. That had to be who he was. This name of Jesus is so powerful and so important. If you go, let's go to Philippians 2 and we'll finish up there. So let's use this name of Jesus to, take, to get access to God the Father. Let's use it when we have a right to for the authority to do God's work. And believing in faith that you can cast out demons, believing in, de in faith you can be safe because you're going in Jesus' name. Amen. And by the way, shrimp is safe in America, okay? You're getting it from a good place, so don't worry too much. Some of you are freaking out. And uh, seafood is dangerous. I know a lot of missionaries got sick from it. And uh, if the water's nasty. And uh, so, okay. Um, let's go to Philippians 2. Let's look at, uh, um, let's see, verse 9. It says, Wherefore God hath also highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, the glory of God the Father. Amen. Every knee in the world, every atheist, everybody, no matter what they believe, doesn't matter, every knee will bow. Every Muslim, every Hindu, every atheist, every Christian, every person who's ever lived, they will bow and they will say, Jesus Christ is Lord. They will. Maybe after they die, it's too late then, but they will still say it. But... That name of Jesus is above every name. Amen. And every knee will bow. 
That if, in the name of Jesus, every knee would bow, every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah. Jesus, the Lord, delivers Christ. The anointed one is Lord. Yeah. The glory of God the Father. This name is above every name. There is a power we have in the name of Jesus. Okay. And by the way, there, there's all these weird movements in Christianity about the name of Jesus and trying to say it in the right language and everything like that. Don't get caught up in all that. Okay, it's weird. Okay, there's different languages that use letters differently. Okay, I don't say to a person, you said Jesus, you're not biblical. <laughs> they don't say ja in Spanish. It's not that complicated. Don't let weird people get weird on you. And, uh, and, and it's the name of Jesus. And if you want to say Yeshua, fine. That's how you say it in Hebrew. But it's not how you say it in Spanish or Swahili. Okay, there's, there, it's fine. It's the name of Jesus. It means the same thing. And that name of Jesus gives us authority. That name of Jesus gives us access. And don't. And so if you can get yourself out of the way and say, I have a right to talk to Jesus. I don't have a right to talk to Jesus. And realize it's not you. You come in Jesus' name. And then you're there with God. Now God's going to listen to you. And God the Father will decide. And everything else is a bunch of things happening in prayer. But you have a right now. But not if you're not saved. If you never received Jesus Christ, you don't have that access. You're going in your own name, your own authority, everything else. When you're born again, you're now underneath the banner of Jesus Christ when you accept Jesus, and now you have a right to go, and now God will hear your prayers. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I've given you these things in my name that your joy would be full, and you've got to be very careful to make sure that you realize that it's all through the power and the name of Jesus Christ. It's how we get there. It's where we get our authority. It's where we get the right to command. It's where we get the right to be safe. All these things we have through the name of Jesus Christ. And so let's make sure that we understand that name. Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess. Now, what do we do in Jesus' name? We'll talk about it more tonight. We'll explain prayer. We'll explain uh, casting out demons. We'll explain uh, miracles and all those things. Uh, all the things you do in Jesus' name, because there's a bunch of things. Now, I'm just explaining to you, this is, why, this is why we pray in Jesus' name. This is why we rebuke. This is what we do in the name of Jesus. And when it says, in Jesus' name, this is what we're supposed to do. It is a name that gives access. It is a name drop that, that gets someone to help you. It is, um, it is used because you are doing works in his place. And it is used for authority that is behind that name. And it is used because that name is what saves us. And if you've never been saved today, I hope you'll call upon the name of the Lord and make Jesus' name your way to heaven. Not your name. Not Open Door Baptist Church. We can't save you. Only Jesus. Let's pray. Father, as we taught a, a more doctrinal message, thank you for my voice holding up, Lord. We give you the praise for that. We pray that in Jesus' name, that people would be saved if they're not saved. We pray that people would understand the incredible access they have to you. Father, we thank you that we have this. We pray that we'd begin to live our lives serving you and doing your work, that we can come in Jesus' name. Because we're there representing you. We're the ambassadors. We're doing your work. Please help us to do these things. And I pray most of all for someone not saved to come to Jesus, Lord. All these things we ask in Jesus' name.